Okay, so today uh, I'm going to continue on where we left off um, a, a couple of weeks ago. So we had the break and then the presentations, but before that we started to look at um, going from a, a simple static layout to, a, uh, to the first implementation of a WordPress theme. So uh, I've got notes on my blog as usual under week six this time. Um, there's a bunch of stuff, there's quite a lot of content here and I'll cover most of it, not necessarily in the order that it's um, presented here, but it's okay if we don't cover everything, there's, we, there's time later on to do that in the coming weeks. Uh, so just to recap uh, about how far we got into developing the WordPress theme, basically this was the, uh, the, the file structure of the theme that we ended up getting. So we had the index.php file, we split off the header and the footer, and we had two different uh, sidebars, and that's about as far as we got. So we still had things like a, a non-functional menu, uh, we still have dummy content in the sidebar. I have made some content changes to the back end of this site uh, since the last time we edited it, just um, just to save a bit of time. So I'll just um, briefly tell you what I've done. So basically I added some, some post content. Um, and today what I want to focus on primarily is the taxonomy or the taxonomic features of WordPress. And when I say that I just mean the, the categories and the tags. So, uh, so uh, I've um, created a bunch of, of, of posts and I'm basically just using cats and dogs as my, my two different categories. Uh, so I've got um, a post here for example and they each just have an image with some text and over here on the right here you can see where I've assigned the categories and also down here are some tags. So I can, uh, so in terms of categories what I've got is if I look over here in the category section I've got uh, my cat posts, my dog posts, and then I've got a third category which I want to function essentially as my blog or my, my news updates. So I've got those three categories and then I've got tags also which operate across both the categories and just describe things like uh, whether the cat or dog is, is large or small or has short, medium or long hair. Okay, um, I've also added a couple of new pages. So I've added an a about me page and I've added a home page. So I've essentially added just enough content to uh, demonstrate uh, the various different uh, templates that I can create to represent this different content. So, so far all of our, uh, all of our content, no matter what it is, okay, is using our index.php template file. So what I want to do is um, have different templates for my home page, my about page, and then I also want to have a different template uh, for my blog category versus my cat and dog categories. Okay, but before I even get into that, what I'm going to do is address this menu uh, situation, which we didn't get around to looking at last, uh, last time we were working on this. Uh, so at the moment, if I look inside of my header.php file, okay, my, uh, my menu is still just uh, statically typed in there. There's a navigation section with an unordered list and some list items with some classes that allow me to style it to look like this, essentially. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is um, go about setting this up so that um, we have a menu which we can uh, adjust or customize in the back end section of WordPress and then it will just output automatically what we tell it to within the template. So there's a section uh, on my blog post here about implementing user customizable menus. 
Uh, there's a few links which talk about different things. The first one talks about the actual process of uh, creating a custom menu uh, in the back end, but this assumes that the theme that we're using uh, already supports custom menus. So we actually need to look also at uh, this third link here. This second one is sort of a, an article uh, on this as well, but the, the third link here is uh, the, the part that we need to refer to um, to figure out how to actually get custom menus to be supported within our theme itself. So the way that we do that is um, I'm, I'm essentially just going to copy and paste some of this code here. So there's initialization code which we need to put somewhere within our theme to, to basically tell WordPress that our theme supports custom menus. Um, so if you read through this, it'll tell you that this code needs to go in a file called functions.php. Now I may, I may have briefly mentioned uh, the functions.php file. It's the one file uh, within, within your theme that doesn't necessarily map to any particular template layout. Uh, basically it's a place for, for us to store um, either initialization code or any other sort of PHP functionality that, that we can then refer to from other parts of our template. So I don't have one so I'm going to create it. I'm going to create a new PHP file and call it functions.php. Okay, so it's important again here that we name things exactly correctly as WordPress expects them, so it's functions with an S, plural, .php. Okay, there it is, there's my file. And I'm going to, um, basically this, this example code here um, gives you two different options. Uh, because we can register multiple menus, so it shows us the code for just registering a single menu and then uh, the same code for registering multiple menus and they're, they're essentially uh, very similar. Um, I'm going to use the one for registering multiple menus uh, just, just to show you what multiple menus looks like um, and we can also use this same code just to register one menu uh, simply by removing one of these lines up here. But anyway, with this code there's uh, essentially two parts of this. There's a function that we've defined here called register my menus and inside of that it calls the WordPress function register nav menus and then passes it an array with information which describes one or more menus that we want to create. So in this case we're creating two, uh, two potential menus that we can customize in WordPress, one called header menu and one called extra menu. Um, even though I'm only going to use one, I'll create the second one just so that you can see what it looks like in the back end. Um, and then the second part of this configuration is we put this line here, add action. And what this is basically saying is uh, this will cause this function to be called at the appropriate part of the WordPress initialization. Um, so this this thing's called an action hook, and so you'll see most of the stuff that you can that you configure in the functions.php file will will basically look like this. There'll be a function, and then there'll be an action hook, which you tell it to call at a at a particular part of the the WordPress initialization process. Um, and any of the documentation will have the exact um, you know the exact syntax syntax that you have to use there. But the important thing between these two parts is that this here uh, matches exactly the name of this function here. So basically you're telling WordPress when it initializes to call this function called register my menus right? and then that will register the menus. So you'll notice that that pattern when we configure things uh, we'll do sort of over and over again. Okay now I'm just going to remove that for a second just so that you can see um, okay so what you can see what the back end looks like uh, when I ha don't have that in there so without um, without telling WordPress that we want it to support custom menus uh, under the appearance menu you won't see any menu uh, option here for configuring um, but as soon as I put it in 
Okay, and I refresh the page. Okay, I see now the, the menus option there. So if that's not working, something's gone wrong with the, the registering of the, uh, uh, or, or telling WordPress that we want to support custom menus. So once that's in there, we can click on the menus link there, and we get a page that looks like this. Can you go back to the page just for a second? Sorry, the code, yeah. Um, so you'll notice that on actually all of these, or a lot of these uh, template files, um, it's actually, it's actually, um, it's a bit obscure why, but I will tell you. So it's actually not required um, if all of you've all you've got inside of a PHP file is PHP. It's not actually required to um, have the closing PHP tag. So I could put it like this, but um, a lot of times uh, it's recommended that you don't do that, and particularly in the functions.php file, because if you accidentally have extra spaces here. For whatever reason, that's actually going to mess up your code and it will cause an error and WordPress won't load. Um, so what they recommend is that you just leave it off. Um, and that's purely the only reason why. Okay, so I've got uh, the menu page here. Now I've already, because I've already done this before, it's, there's already a menu in there, but um, I can delete this menu and start again. Okay, so this is what it'll look like if you haven't set up any menus. And basically, you enter a menu name. So I'll call this my main menu. And then you add some uh, content to the menu. So over here, you can see the three different types of content you can add. I can add pages. So I can add the About Me and the Home page. Okay, I can add uh, categories. So I'll add dogs, cats, and uh, blog. So you'll notice that by default there's always a category called uncategorized which everything gets put in if you don't specifically put it in another category. So I don't want that showing up in my menu so I won't add it. But I will add those other three. And then the third thing, uh, you, the third type of content you can add to the menu is a link to a external URL. So for example, uh, let's say I want to add a link to um, RSPCA's Adopt a Pet website. I can simply copy that, paste it in here, and then tell it what I want the menu item to be called. And then again, add it to the menu. Um, so we can drag these things around. Okay, so that they're in the order that we want. Um, if you click down on any of these, okay, you've got options to remove or configure them. Um, you can change the, the name of the navigation label. By default, if it's a page or a category, it's going to use that name of the page or category, but you can change that. So there's various things, various things you can configure within here. Um, you can also tell it to automatically add new pages that you create to the menu. So if that's something that you want, you can tick that. Um, but the other important thing is to uh, assign it to one or more of these theme locations that we've defined in our functions.php file. Okay, so that was our header menu and our extra menu there. So I want this to be able to output um, in my header menu area, so I'm going to tick that there. And uh, I'll hit save menu. Okay, and All right, now it's not going to make any difference yet because I still need to uh, add something back to my. Um, I need to add something into my template to actually output the custom menu. So that's the second part of this, or the third part of it. We've registered. We've registered the menu areas. We've created a custom menu in the WordPress backend. Now we need to go back to our header. Um, .php file, and actually replace the code where we've where we've hard-coded this uh, temporary menu here uh, with uh, a WordPress function that will output our menu for us. So I'm going to comment that out rather than deleting it just so you can see that there will be some, some minor differences that we'll need to deal with uh, when we output um, the, the WordPress menu. 
Okay, so I'll scroll down here back on this page again to displaying menus on the theme. Okay, and the way we do it is with this bit of code here. So I'm simply going to copy that and paste it into my header.php file. Okay, and as you can see, it's a call again to WordPress function wpnav menu. And we pass it an array which tells it the uh, theme location that we want it to that we want it to grab. So, um, so this here, this header menu, um, should match what we've defined in the functions.php file as the header menu, which should also match in the back end this theme location that we've assigned this menu to there. So it's sort of a three-way connection between those, those three different areas. Okay, so I'll save that and see what that looks like when I refresh the page. Okay, so you can see something's changed. Um, so my original menu has disappeared and it's output now um, a, a list of the menu items which correspond with that menu uh, that I created. Um, so these links all actually work. Okay, I can, I can click on them and okay, view the content including the external link. Okay, but the obvious problem is that it's no longer styling the way that I wanted my menu to style. And the reason for that is, is there's, there is some differences between how I originally uh, created this navigation menu and what WordPress has output. So you can see some of the dif differences. Okay, my, my menu I, I contained within a nav HTML5 nav element, whereas the WordPress one outputs it within a div. Okay, I have IDs called nav inner where on the unordered list, whereas WordPress is outputting menu main and things like that. Okay, so all I really need to do is go back through my style sheet and make sure that the styles that I had applied to these elements now point to the exact uh, the exact classes and IDs of the elements that that WordPress is outputting. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste those styles from my completed example just to save a bit of time. Okay, copy that. Okay, but it, it's simply a matter of understanding the HTML that WordPress is outputting and knowing how to target that in your CSS file. Uh, so let's see if I refresh that. There we go. Okay, something's happened. And I might just have to delete some of my old styles here. So I'll delete my old mini styles. from. Alright, there we go. Okay, so now it is 
Um, and now my styles are matched up with the particular HTML that WordPress is outputting. Okay. All right, now. I think I just need to make a couple of changes over here. Okay, I've got some leftover stuff from the last class which I just need to get rid of. Um, right, let's try that. All right, there we go. Okay, so so now my my menu is essentially working. Now you can actually create um, sort of more complex menus. You can create sub menu structures by um, dragging them sort of to the right and underneath one. Um, okay, so I can put my um, about me section if I wanted to have it as a sub menu underneath home I could do that um, obviously you're going to need again in your style sheet to provide the styling for those um, you know those uh, sub sub lists that will contain the the sub menu items and again if you just inspect the code that that WordPress outputs you'll be able to see the classes that it applies so in this example sub menu um, in my case I don't really have any need for a sub menu, so I'm just going to keep it as a top level menu, but that option is there for you. Uh, I have a I have a specific post linking to some stuff about creating CSS drop down menus if that's um, at all useful for you. Okay, but for the rest the rest of this example, I'm just going to have a, a, a top level menu here. Okay. Um, All right, so now what I want to start looking at is uh, how to style some of this content differently. Um, so, sorry, let me just rearrange this menu again. Okay, so for example, on this front page on my home page here um, all of these all of these pages are going to be using the index.php template file okay because that's the on, the only one that we've got okay so if if you remember again referring back to our WordPress template hierarchy okay we've got all these different options of creating different templates and this is sort of the, the, the flow diagram of the logic that WordPress uses to figure out which one to use. And ultimately, if no, no more specific templates exist, it's always going to default back to the index.php template. And because that's all we have so far, then that's, that's the one it's using for everything. So if we want to create different templates, uh, all we really need to do is figure out the correct template name that WordPress expects for a particular um, for a particular type of template. So in the instance of my home page, what you can see is that it's outputting based on what my index.php file is telling it to. Okay, it's outputting uh, the content and above it it's outputting the title with a link um, to that, that post uh, in, in a heading to tag. Now for my home page, as part of the content, I have this welcome heading. Um, and in this case, what I, I really don't want it to output the default title of the page. I'd rather just have the heading as this, this welcome, which is in the content area of the page itself. So what I can do is I can create a, a, a template that's specific to the front page um, and, and just simply not have it output uh, the title. So the way that I do that is, um, 
again, referring back to my template hierarchy diagram, you'll notice that there's um, so sorry, I should just I should just backtrack a little bit. Before I even get to there, um, what you'll notice is that if I go to the the base URL of my site, it's not actually showing my home page. Okay, because the default behavior of the, de the default behavior of, of WordPress is just to show you all of the most recent posts in reverse chronological order. Um, it's just the fact that I have a page here called home that it loads up when I click on the home link. So what I really would rather it do is that rather than loading up this view when I go to the, the base URL, I want it to load up this home page view here. So I can do that quite easily by and the relevant section in my notes here is uh, creating a static front page. Okay, and there's a link to the documentation but it's quite easy. All you do is go into your WordPress backend and go to settings and reading. Okay and You'll notice up here it says front page displays and by default it's set to your latest posts. You can also change the number of posts that will output here. The part I'm interested in is uh, displaying a static page as the front page. So I'm going to click on that and then I can select any of the pages I've created to work as the front page. So I'm going to uh, click on home there so that the home page gets set as my front page, hit save changes, okay and then if I again visit the root URL of my site now rather than it showing my recent posts, okay it's going to show me this home page here, okay and if I had to set it to any of the other pages that would have shown that page. Okay so now this is legitimately my front page. So if I want to go and modify this so that it doesn't output uh, that title there, what I can do is, you can see in this template hierarchy, there's a template file I can create called front-page.php. And if that exists and WordPress happens to be looking at the, the front page or the home page, then it will use that instead of using the index.php file, which is what it's using at the moment. So what I need to do is create that front-page.php file and because it's going to be you know, pretty much uh, mostly identical to the index.php template, I'm going to start by just copying that and renaming it to front-page.php. Okay, again, the, the syntax needs to be exact for WordPress to recognize it, or the spelling I should say. Okay, so here's my front page.php. Um, and I can see if this is working by just entering in some garbage text somewhere there. All right, and I should be able to see now, okay, that that's being output on this, but every other page should still be reverting back to the index.php template. And though while the content that's being output changes, Okay, it's it's obviously not using that template, not using that front page template, only this one is. Okay, so what I really want to do is uh, just get rid of this part of the template where I'm outputting the, the permalink and the title. So I'm just going to remove that line, save it. Again, make sure every time I say that these are uploaded to my server. Hit refresh, okay, and there it no longer outputs the title. But on any other page which has a title, okay, it still outputs that original title like that. Okay, so that's now, now we've got two templates. We've got a front page template and we've got an index template for everything else. So we can create more templates now and essentially we just repeat the same process. Okay, so um, for example, on the About Me page, let's just say that on the About Me page I don't want to have the sidebar appear. Okay, in this case I can uh, create a template um, specifically for, for this page.
Okay, so there's a section here called page templates. Page templates sort of work um, slightly differently to the other templates um, in that page templates are the only ones which uh, actually allow you to assign a template um, to a to a page in the in the WordPress backend, and I'll show you what that means. But rather than using a file naming convention, the way that we identify a page template to um, to WordPress is uh, to at the top of the template file put a PHP comment in that looks like this. So again, what I'm going to do is start with uh, the index.php file as the basis for my new template. And I'll create this, I'll call this template page underscore template underscore no underscore sidebar. Okay, so I'm creating a page template here which, um, which is essentially uh, exactly like the index page except that it doesn't have a sidebar. Okay, and then I can apply this to any pages which I don't want to have a sidebar. So I'll create that there and I need to make sure, so this is recognized as a page template, that I copy and paste this uh, PHP comment at the top of the file. Okay, so there it is there, and essentially the comment just has to say template name colon and then whatever you want to call the template. Okay, so I'll call this one no sidebar. Okay, and what I can do then is go into my pages and into my about me page. Okay, and you'll notice before I put this in, let's just backtrack a little bit. So I'll remove that, I'll remove that comment there again and you'll see the difference. Okay, so before I before I define this as a page template. You'll notice there's nowhere here in the page attributes that allows me to set a template. So as soon as I put the comment in and I refresh this page, okay, now we have the option to assign a, a page template like this. Okay, so if I leave it as default, it's going to use the index.php template. Okay, in which case it will uh, simply have the two sidebars. Um, if Sorry, it will still have the sidebar. If I set it to uh, no sidebar, okay, and I can test the difference before doing anything again just by, say, outputting some text, no sidebar template. Okay, so this is what it looked like before I changed the template. Now if I refresh, Okay, now we see that it's using the no sidebar template. And I haven't actually removed the sidebar yet, but this just lets me know that it is actually using that particular template. So what I really need to do in order to remove the sidebar is get rid of this PHP get sidebar line here. Okay, so that will stop it from including that sidebar PHP template file. But the other thing I want to do is make this content area fill up all of the horizontal space available to it. Um, so I can see if I click on the section, my section with the ID of main content, okay, I can see that in my style somewhere I've specifically set it a width of 61% to allow room for the, for the sidebar. Um, if I remove that, okay, I can see that that, that, that style now allows it to fill up the entire width. So what I really need to do is create a, a new style which will override that width setting in the instance of my no sidebar template. So the way that I'm going to do that is, um, well all I'm really going to do is add a new class to this uh, main content section and I'll call it no sidebar. Okay, and then obviously I have to uh, go and create that style. So here's my main content uh, style here. 
with my, my width set to 61%. Okay, so what I can do is create a, a more specific uh, style, so main content with a class of no sidebar, and override that width setting so that it's now auto. Okay, and because because there's there's no sidebar, there's, there's, there's no columns, there's no point to float it anymore either, so I may as well set float to none. Okay. So now when I refresh, okay, it should automatically take up that the full space available to it. So now on any page, where I, any any page I want, I can come in and and apply any of my available page templates. I could create more different page template templates to look like various different things. Okay, and just by changing them in the back end, I can change how uh, it outputs in the front end. So as I mentioned, the page templates are the only one which you only templates which you can sort of selectively assign uh, to, to content within the WordPress backend. Um, you don't really have that option to assign different, uh, different templates in the backend to different posts, for example, but you can, you can with pages. Okay. So now we have uh, three different templates. Okay, we've got our front page template, we've got our no sidebar page template, and we've got our index template which is the fallback for everything else. Okay, so what I want to do next is start creating some templates for some of these categories. So I've got three categories here and and basically I want them to look uh, one of two different ways. Uh, I, want them, I want my blog essentially to look like this, but I'd rather that my cats and dogs categories display more as, as like just a gallery of, of pictures with the title, uh, which I can then click on and, um, and go to the, to the full post. Um, so, So sort of like in this in this screenshot here, sort of something more like this. Okay, and I've got I've actually got a separate video here from a previous semester where I covered that that just by itself. So uh, if you want to go over that in more detail, you can also look at that video. Um, all right, but before before I get to that, I should mention this section here, the WordPress body class, because um, this is this is quite useful as well. So the WordPress body class will actually allow you to make changes to different sections of the site without having to resort to creating new templates for them. Um, so if there are if there are changes between uh, sections of the site which are purely which are purely um, style style changes, then you can you can do that without actually having to make uh, a different different template. So let's say, for example, uh, let's say, for example, on the the dogs page and the cats page, I want to change the color of, of the background of this header up here. Then I could do that by uh, by actually going and making different header template files, which I include in different category files for the dogs and the cats. But because it's just a purely a stylistic change, there's an easier way of doing something like that. Um, and that's by using this WordPress body class. And this is actually it's actually really useful and, and, and an under probably an underutilized feature of, of WordPress. And and really all you do is you replace the body, the HTML body tag within your uh, within your uh, template file uh, with with this line of code here. 
So I'll jump back into my header where the opening body tag happens to be. And rather than just having body, I'm going to have body. And then before the closing uh, angle bracket of the body tag, we're going to output uh, this bit of PHP here, which again just calls a WordPress function called body class. Okay, and what that will do is when the HTML is ultimately output, uh, it will it will look like this. So depending on the depending on the content that you're viewing, uh, you'll get a whole bunch of different classes uh, output within the body class that relate to uh, the type of content that you're viewing. So if it's a single post, for example, you get a bunch of classes that look like that. The home page, you'll get something like this. Categories, you'll get something like this, for example. So once I've got that in there, I go back to my website and I refresh. Okay, so we'll have a look at the, the rendered HTML. So there's my body class now on the home page. You can see it adds a class called home, a class called page, okay, and a bunch of these other ones. Even even a class called logged in if you want to style things differently based on whether you're you're logged in or logged out. Um, or whether you know whether you're you're a logged in user or just a, a guest user. When I go to the the dogs category, okay, you can see it applies classes like category and category hyphen dogs, for example, cats. Okay, same deal, but category cats. So what I can do is I can take advantage of this, knowing now that I can target these styles specifically on this page and change then the style that's applied for the header background. Okay, so I can, for example, um, where are we here? If we'll, we'll go to the style.css file. All right, and here's the section, oops. Okay, here's the section where I'm styling the, the header and the footer to have that linear gradient. And what I can do is uh, simply add um, some more styles, and I'll, I'll just copy and paste these again from my completed example to save a bit of time. Okay, so I'll add these two new ones in. And all I'm doing is again styling the header and the footer, but I'm styling it differently when that header is under an element called category cat. So I, I could have put body dot category cats there if I want, but it's essentially the same thing. So it's under the body header is within the body element in on a page which contain where the body element contains a class called category cats. It will style it with with a, a blue blue gradient, and if it's on the dogs category, it will style it with a green gradient. Okay, so refresh. All right, and now we can see the cats has the blue gradient. We go to the dogs, has the green gradient, and everything else, which is not going to have a category cats or a category dogs class applied to the body, is going to revert back to the default purple styling. Okay, so again, we can see that if we inspect the HTML. There's the body, okay, category dogs. If we look at the header, okay, we can see that the uh, CSS that's applied is the category dogs header, okay, and that's overriding any style that would have been in a less specific CSS style that just says header. Okay, so that's one way of styling different parts of the website differently. And as I said, if they're purely stylistic, then you may not have to even go to the effort of creating different uh, different uh, category templates, for example, or, or, or other kind of templates. In my case, because I, I do want to change this so it looks more like a gallery, then there's there's fairly significant content changes that I want to make with this. And in, in, in this case, I do need to go and create specific category templates. So, so if we if we again just looking at these three categories my blog category and my cats category and my dogs category. 
okay really uh, out of these three categories I want two different layouts I want one for the blog category and I want a different one which applies to both the dogs and the cats category okay more of a gallery layout so I could create a separate I could create a separate template for each of these three but because the cats and the dogs are going to have the same one what I'm going to do is is create one category specifically for the blog and then a default category which everything else that is not the blog will apply which will be a, which will be a, a gallery layer so I'll, I'll start with the default category and again I'll begin by duplicating my index.php file and I'm just going to call this category.php okay and and essentially um, okay essentially what I want to do is uh, well first of all again I want to get rid of the sidebar so I'll get rid of that I'll add the class no sidebar to that main content section okay and what I really want to get rid of is any of this text I really just want to have the title and the image and then I want to style them so that they lay out in, in sort of a gallery a gallery display or a grid so it might make sense to just get rid of the part which outputs the content of the post here so I'll get rid of that okay and refresh and you can see what it's done is it's actually gotten rid of the image as well so the image is part of the post content so what I want is a way to output the images separately uh, to the content of the post now there is a way to do that and um, and that refers to this whole section here about post thumbnails and as I said because this is a slightly complex uh, topic I do have a separate video on that but I'm gonna go through it now um, also anyway so we'll just jump back to one of our posts for a moment so let's have a look at one of these cat posts okay so what we can do is we can actually assign a thumbnail image to each of our posts in addition to any content or instead of any content in here um, but again in order to set that up uh, we need to enable that within our theme so so I've linked here again off my blog to the uh, relevant documentation on this and again this is just something that needs to go uh, within your functions.php file so it's this line here add theme support post thumbnails which I'm going to put inside my functions.php file now the order of this is not really important okay so it doesn't matter that it becomes comes before or after the, the register menu stuff um, okay but this allows us to um, support post thumbnails now the other thing that we usually want to do is uh, define some thumbnail sizes because you can have multiple different sizes of thumbnails maybe in one part of your site you want to output them as 100 by 100 pixel images in another part of your site you might want to output them as 320 by 240 pixel images or whatever other size so so what we need to do is um, define uh, a thumbnail size that we want to output and I've done that and again I'm just going to copy this from my completed example okay and we do it with this function here okay add underscore image underscore size all right and we tell it a few different things first of all we give it a name so that when we in in our template when we're trying to output a thumbnail this size this is the name that we use and then we tell it a, a pixel width and height dimension that we want to use so in this case the thumbnail will be 200 pixels by 200 pixels and this last parameter here uh, tells WordPress whether or not it should uh, crop 
in, if we if we put true here, then it will crop, and if if it's false here, uh, it will just proportionally resize, so that it'll it will be proportionally resized, but fit within, so its longest dimension fits within that 200 by 200 pixel square. And I'll change that and show you what the difference is later on. Okay, but this is how we add um, thumbnail support support and define an image size, and we can add more of these. Okay, let's say we wanted to, let's say we wanted to, um, you know, create one called large, and set that to be 640 by 480, and not cropped. Okay, then we could do something like that. Okay, but I'm not using that for anything at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it as that. Okay. Now, once we've done that. I should be able to come back into my post, and if I refresh, I should see a new section down here. Okay, so I do, I see this new section called Featured Image, and I click on Set Featured Image, and I choose an image which I want to be use as the thumbnail of this post. Now in my case, all of these I'm using the same image that is in the content of the post, but there's nothing there's nothing that means that I have to do that. I could use a different image, whether it's the same image but cropped differently or a different image entirely. Okay, the featured image doesn't have to be within the content of the post, but just so happens to be the case that I'm using the same ones here. So we set the featured image there, and then that will then then that will output if we if we tell it to um, when we're calling the post thumbnail within a template. So I'll update that, save that. So obviously, obviously, I've had to go through and do this for all of the posts within mm -hmm. my uh, within my website. And so the final bit of this equation is uh, actually outputting uh, the post thumbnail. Okay, so. All right, and the way the way that we do that is um, is still on this page. There's a few different examples of the different ways that you can output a thumbnail. Um, the way that we're going to do it is to call this particular thumbnail size that we've set up. Okay, but the function is always the same. It's always uh, it's always this the post thumbnail, and the simplest case for us is going to be this one here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back into my category.php file, and I'm going to output the post thumbnail here. Okay, and here again, the only thing I'm passing it is the name of the thumbnail, and this here is going to uh, need to match up uh, exactly with this here, this name here, category hyphen thumb. Right, and then that should output me a 200 pixel by 200 pixel cropped thumbnail of the featured image of that post. Okay, so with a bit of luck, we hit refresh, all right, and there I get for each of my posts featured image a 200 pixel by 200 pixel cropped thumbnail output. Okay, now you can also um, you can also specify uh, directly the, um, uh, the the size at which you want the thumbnail to be output. And the way you do that is like, this here okay so I'll show you the difference it's still a it's still a call to the post thumbnail WordPress function but rather than giving it a uh, rather than giving it a name that we've already set up we can send it an array with the dimensions that we want okay so let's say I want this to be a hundred pixels by uh, no, let's, let's make it bigger maybe 300 pixels by 300 pixels Okay, and in this case, it won't be cropped. Okay, so you can see that they're not all 
the same dimensions. They're proportionally resized to fit within that square. Okay, but for me, I'm just going to keep it as the category thumb output. Okay, now I also want to get rid of this post author and timestamp. Okay, and, and I'm going to make a few other style changes. Okay, but basically this this now is going to apply to anything that's a category. Okay, including to my blog. Now that's actually not something that I want it to do. So, um, actually, before I get that, I, I, I'll, I'll just finish styling. I'll just finish styling this uh, category template, and um, just to save some time, I'm going to copy from the completed example. Okay, but I'm not really doing anything different here other than copying over some uh, some new styles. Okay, so we've got some styles here for the gallery layout. Check those in. Let's see what that looks like. And I just need to grab a image file. So I'm changing as one of my styles is to change the background, the page background texture for these categories. So I need this wood texture background. Grab the couple more styles there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I essentially haven't changed any of the content. I've just applied some some different CSS styles, so the outputs and looks like sort of like a gallery of of, of Polaroids. Okay, and I can click through on these and it will go to the single post. Okay, but it's featuring the, uh, the featured image, okay, and then just the title of the post there. And I've obviously put, you know, output the permalink in there as well, so it links to the post. Okay, and it should apply to the other categories as well. Now my only issue here really is that this is now going to be applying to my blog post which I don't want. This is not a particularly good layout for looking at blog posts where I'm probably you know, particularly interested in, in the actual text. So what I can do is um, uh, what I can do is uh, create a different template that is specific to the, the category uh, of blogs. So because again I'd, I'd like my blog essentially to look the same as, as you know my index page or my home page um, then what I'm going to do is again just duplicate my index.php file and in this case I'm going to call it category and then hyphen blog okay so category hyphen and then the name of the category or more, more accurately the slug of the category that I want this to refer to and I'll show you what I mean by the category slug. Okay, so when I look at my categories, okay, so we have the name but we also have the slug here. Now the slug is essentially just going to be the name, but if I have a if I have a category that has um, Okay, if I have a uh, if I have a category that has um, spaces in the name, okay, then then um, the slug the slug so so I can write a template that doesn't have spaces in the file name. Essentially, the slug is just going to be 
uh, the category name but having spaces replaced with uh, hyphens or underscored scores. I can't remember. But if you're wanting to create a category template to target a particular category, this is where you come to look and see what the name of the category slug is. In this case, it's just blog, lowercase. So that's what I'm calling my uh, category template to specifically target the blog. All right, and so now that that's in there, if I go to the blog, okay, it should now use that original um, sort of layout that's more suitable uh, to looking like a blog. Whereas the cats and the dogs, okay, retain the gallery.php template. Okay. See what else we have got. Um, okay, now, all right. So we've looked at categories, but we haven't really done much with tags uh, so far. So what I'd like to do is um, now the thing with tags is, as you saw, there's no easy way to output them as part of the menu. Um, but we can still use them as a as a sort of a, fi a filtering method um, by by outputting them, say for example, within the post. Um, so what I can do is I can go to um, let's say all right. Let's say for any um, oh we'll just do, we'll, we'll do it in the uh, we'll do it in the uh, let's say the index .php file. Okay, so basically all I'm going to do is add another line above above where I'm outputting the author information on the post within the loop. Okay, and it's just going to be a paragraph which I've given a class of tags, but inside of that is the important part is again just a bit of PHP which is a WordPress function called the tags, okay, and that will simply output any any tags that are applied to the post that we're looking at uh, with a prefix as defined here, and then you can tell it to use whatever character you like to separate them. In this case, uh, it's a comma, and then uh, I believe this is output at the end, so you get a, a, a line break at the end there. Okay, so I should be able to now click on any of these. Uh, th these are the tags. So uh, this line here is the tags, and the line just below it is the time. Sorry. Yeah, so that's all right. So there's the the paragraph paragraph tags, and then um, another section with the, the the date and the author. Okay, so there you can see there's my my tags with the prefix, comma separated. Um, and and you'll also notice that they're actually they're actually links. So I can click on these links, and you'll notice that the URL will change um, to to tag equals, and then the name of the tag that I looked at. Okay, so this provides us with another another layout. Now in this case, it's using the index.php layout, but because in the styles that I'd copied over. I must have styled the tag somewhere, yes. So body with the tag, I also applied that background um, wood texture. But essentially what I, I'd like when I'm looking at, um, looking at um, a bunch of posts within a particular tag, I'd like it to have the same layout as, as this here. So what I can do is create, again, another template part. Um, um, like category, except in this case I'll call it tag. And because it's going to be very similar to what I've already created for the default category template, okay, again, I'm just going to duplicate that and uh, I will call it tag.php. Uh, sorry, wrong, wrong one. Tag.php. Okay, and now 
when I click on a tag. Okay, it will apply that. Uh, it will apply that layout again to this. Uh, Yep. Is there any way to see what's available in the console? Um, uh, I don't. Sorry, I don't quite follow what you're, so like, what yeah, you're asking. Like, if you go to the code for this page. Yep. Um, so you've got uh, like while well, have a post, then the post, and then the zip and stuff. Yep. Like, if you delete that, is that information still available in the console? Is that like some uh, you mean if you you mean if you want to get the post without actually outputting outputting them or something? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's already available, and then you're pulling it out here. Is this? But basically, basically, depending on what the URL is, will determine what what the set of content is. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. So yeah. Can you like debug all of it? Can you just check what is actually there? Uh, you, uh, you you could yeah. I mean um. Let's see, you could, um, um, uh, yes, yes you can. Um, I guess the, 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 the coding interface to do it using all of these functions like, like um, the permalink and the post thumbnail and all of that sort of thing don't, don't give you direct access to that entire list, but you can query you can query the database separately, um, and and output um, you know output whatever it is that you want, or or look at whatever it is that you want. But I mean, I guess really really with with this way, the only way that you're going to be able to know what the what the um, what the scope of all the content that is available to it is is to just output whatever the information is like this. I guess I and mean, that sounds very confusing. I'm not I'm not explaining it very well, but um, you can you can for more complex uh, queries query the database separately to the WordPress loop, um, and there is stuff in the WordPress documentation on that. So you you can write a, you can write a custom query to get whatever it is you want out of the out of the database and return it that way rather than using this WordPress loop syntax if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. All right, so we've got we've got our tag pages um, displaying like our category page again, but because there's no menu item highlighted up here for it, it's it might be useful to add something which actually tells us what we're looking at. So, um, so in addition, in addition to everything that's already in the category template, what uh, what I'm going to add is this line here. Um, okay, which will simply uh, inside of a heading two tag, again calling another WordPress function in this case called single tag title, and that will that will output along with this prefix. Uh, the tag that we're currently looking at. Okay, so if I refresh that now, okay, I see tagged as long hair. If I go to any of any of these other tags, okay, that will be updated there. Okay, same deal. So, um, okay, so that's that's our tags as well. Um, let's see, what else do we have still to do? Okay, so now another template that you might want to use is whenever we click on a, a, a single post, Okay, this is still using the default index.php template to lay out, but you may want to lay out um, this differently again. So let's say again, in this case, we want to get rid of the sidebar on, on the single post, um, but it could be any other, equally could be any other change. 
so what I can do again, you know, if I refer to the the template hierarchy, I can see there's a a, a template file called single.php, which if it exists will be used for a single page. Uh, in preference to the index.php file. So again, I'm going to repeat the same process because it, I already want it to look you know, fairly similar to the index.php file. I'll copy that, rename it single.php, and in this case, again, I'm just going to get rid of the sidebar, add the class, no sidebar, like so. Okay, and Oops, we're right down here. Sorry, I put the file outside of my theme directory, that's why it didn't work. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so now any of these single posts, and this will work on a blog entry as well. Okay, will um, be output with without the sidebar. Okay, so again, I could go on adding more specific templates if I needed to, and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, but after a while, it doesn't, you know, it's not really beneficial to go into much more detail because there's there's a few that you will probably use, and then there's some others that you you, you may or may not use. And then there's a bunch that you, you may never use. So really, this will depend on what your site needs. Um, so this is why it's important to kind of figure out what your content's going to be and how you're going to categorize it, because this is part one. Of, this is one of the last things that you need to include in your first assignment is, you know, some some initial breakdown of, of what WordPress template files you may need um, for for all of your different layouts and all of your different content. Um, a couple of others that may be worth mentioning are the 404.php, uh, which you can uh, which you can implement if, if someone requests a requests a page that doesn't exist. Um, then you can create your own 404 um, page. Uh, a search.php page because you have search functions which will return posts. You may want to style those differently. In fact, I, I um, no, I'll add that one later. Um, Um, and then, I mean, you know, it's. I, I guess, as I said, it's not not really worthwhile going through in detail every one of these. But to say that, um, you know, they're they're all there if you need them. Um, there's documentation on them. But really, the process is the same. You you create a more specific template that applies to something, and it will use that instead of the less specific template. Okay. All right. Um, we'll go through a couple of other little setting things. Okay. So you'll notice so far that my URLs all look like this. Okay. So particular post we use the the p and then the the id of the post here. We can change that so that the URLs look more human readable, um, or or what you might see called friendly URLs um, or, or permalinks, Word, WordPress calls them permalinks. Um, and the way that we do that is to uh, go into the WordPress backend and go to settings and then permalinks. Okay, and it gives you a bunch of predefined options. You can see the default one is what we have. Okay, the question mark P equals one, two, three, for example, but we can change it, for example, to reflect the, the say, the date of the of the post um, or, or the post name or even our own custom structure. So one that I like to do is um, to have the URL be the base URL and then forward slash and then the category name and then forward slash and then the post name. That's how I have things on um, on on my my blog here. Okay, and so the way that we do that is we put in these placeholder tags here to represent that. And there's a link here, a number of tags are available, which will show you the different the different things that you can use to build up the URL. Um, and these are them 
these are those here. So there's, for example, category and there's post name. So if I want it to look like what I currently have my blog as, then I can put it here and do something like this. Okay, category and then it's um, it's bookended by the uh, the percentage signs and then forward slash post name forward slash. Okay, so that will allow me to have that that URL structure. Then I can hit uh, save changes. Now, what WordPress will try and do here is automatically write this these rename rules to a file called a .ht access file. More likely than not, WordPress won't be able to write to that on your server. In which case, it will give you the the code here um, to put in that file yourself. So that's what it's done for me here. I'm going to copy that code there, and what I need to do is create inside of my theme directory. Okay, in the root of my theme directory, create a new file. Okay, and it has to be called exactly this .ht access. Okay, so uh, ht access file on a Apache web server is is a file that it will look for um, for for certain directives. So things like um, things like renaming URLs or preventing you from viewing a directory or, or something like that. Okay, so there's no file extension. The dot at the beginning just means it's a hidden file, but it has to be called exactly this .ht access. So we create that, and then I'm going to paste the uh, code that WordPress gave me in there. Okay, and so these are all the these are all the things that allow it to rewrite the URL uh, in 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 a way that we have sort of the the structure that we've told it we want it to look like. Okay, so we save that, and now if we revisit our site, okay, and we look at the um, go to the various different categories for example okay now you can see rather than having question mark p equals something or cat equals something we get category and then um, category cats for example okay, and this one we get cats and then the name of the post same deal with pages okay so it's just a more user user friendly readable way of, of having a URL so that's that's a that's a reasonably simple thing to set up. Okay, now I think this is the last thing. So the last thing I really want to show is uh, so far I've still just got this dummy content in the sidebar, and what I really want to do is uh, make that into a dynamic sidebar, or what's also referred to as a widgetized sidebar. So um, so again, if if I go back to my let's see my um, if I go back to my blog site, okay, you can see on my sidebar over here, okay, I've got a bunch of different things. There's a tag cloud, some popular posts, okay. So all of this stuff, uh, all all of this stuff in here, I actually configure in the back end of WordPress. Um, in a visual interface by dragging and dropping these little widget things over. Um, by creating a widgetized sidebar, you can do that. You can create, a, create an area of content where um, anyone, anyone who has access to the administration interface can modify the content in there without having to go and change anything in the template files. So that's exactly what I'm going to create here, and I'll show you how to create that. Um, Okay, so there's this section here called creating a widgetize sidebar. Okay, and again, this follows a similar uh, a similar pattern. Um, basically, we need to set something up in the functions PHP file, which um, which tells WordPress that we we want to enable widgets in our theme. And so, um, so this is this here. Um, so I, I could just copy and paste this. I'm going to copy and paste something that's very similar from my completed example. Um, where are we here? Functions.php. This one, okay. OK, 
Okay, I'll paste this here. Basically, the only thing that's different is I've got two of these here from, from the example on, on the, that documentation page. Okay, but basically it, it's two parts again. There's the, the function that is called and then a action hook. And in this case, the action, uh, this here needs to say widgets init. And again, this here needs to match the name of this function here. But where the sidebars actually get registered are here. So I've just done it twice, so I can register two sidebars. Okay, but it looks like this. So register sidebar, and then there's array, and we tell it various different things about the sidebar. We give it a name, an ID, and then we can tell it some HTML that we want to wrap each widget in, and also some HTML to wrap the title in. And so I've done basically that, the exact same thing, except the first one sidebar one, and the second one sidebar two. Again, just to show you that you can do it with more than one sidebar. So once we've got that in there, I can go back to my admin section and uh, again when I refresh this page you should see a new menu item here uh, called widgets underneath appearance. Okay, so there it is there. There's the widget section and here's my sidebar one and my sidebar two. Again, because I've already done this once before, this is already populated with content. But again, just like the menus, this is a, a drag and drop kind of thing. So you can drag and drop and reorder whatever widgets that you want. Um, you click down on them and, and make various modifications to the configuration and so forth. Okay, but so here I have sidebar one with a bunch of widgets and sidebar two with a couple of other widgets. Okay. Now, um, again, the third part is to modify our sidebar templates so that they uh, actually uh, function as dynamic or widgetized sidebars. So all I'm going to do is replace that dummy text there with this. Okay, so I've still got the HTML for my sidebar, but then I just use this one a simple WordPress function call, dynamic sidebar, and I pass it the name of the sidebar that I want to output there. So if it's in my remembering again, I have two sidebar templates, sidebar S1 and sidebar S2. So in sidebar S1, I'm outputting sidebar 1. In sidebar S2, I'll output sidebar 2. Okay, then in any other template file I can include one or the other or even both if I want of those sidebars with the different widgets. Okay, so the front page for example, I can include sidebar S1 and let's say on the um, about page or the page template no sidebar here, no, no point, there's no sidebar. Let's say the category blog page will output um, the sidebar with this, the second sidebar. Okay, and there we go. So here is now my front page with the sidebar output. And remembering in my sidebar template, okay, I've got, I've, I don't have any of that in there. It's all being generated through the widgets interface. It's just this one line that's, that's enabling that. Okay, and you can see my widgets output there and they match up with the widgets you can see in here in the correct order. So there's a search widget, a recent post widget, um, there's a tag cloud here. Um, some meta information about the site and there's a recent post widget here and the only reason I've added that in is because that's that's not one of the default widgets that comes with WordPress okay so you can download and install um, widget plugins just like you would any other plugin they're all plugins but some of them are widgets and, and they will appear up here and so this is an example of one of those is the the slider recent post slider widget Okay, so there they are. There's my search widget, recent post, recent post slider. Okay, they all function, they all connect up. Okay, there's my tag cloud. So this is one way I can have some sort of menu interface to the tag um, taxonomy of my website. So a tag cloud is just all of the tags used in my post and the size represents how, how many posts have been tagged with that. So long hair, obviously there's a lot. Um, medium hair, okay, there's just a few or just one. Um, 
there's the meta information which includes some useful links for example to the the site admin so you don't have to type the WP admin directly into the URL and links to logging out for example as well um, and there's the search form here um, which can be quite useful as well so I can do a search here okay and it will it will list all of the posts um, that that contain that particular uh, that particular uh, search term. So this is another example here where, where I might just add one extra uh, one extra um, template called search.php. Okay, so at the moment, again, it's reverting back to my index.php template, but if I create a specific search.php, and in this case, I'll just make one tiny change um, just to demonstrate one more feature, which is that sometimes if you're listing a bunch of posts all in one go, uh, you may not want to output the entire content of the post. So you can, rather than use the content, use the excerpt. Okay, and you'll see the difference when I refresh here, that rather than listing out the entire content of the post, it lists out um, a, a summary or, or the first certain number of characters of the post. Um, now you'll notice this first, this blog entry 3 here is different and I'll show you why that is. Uh, if I go into my post section and I look at, um, let's say I look at a blog entry 2. Uh, now let me just undo something first of all. Now this is what it will look like first of all if you haven't uh, if you haven't um, uh, enabled these other options, but uh, this is something that's again often overlooked in the WordPress backend. Is you've a lot of these pages, you've got extra options uh, underneath this little tab, this little pull-down tab called screen screen options. And in the posts, in order to see the excerpt field, you have to tick excerpt there, and then it will appear here. So the way the excerpt works is that um, by default it will take the first certain number of characters of the post and use that as the excerpt. But you can also write your own excerpt here. So this might be useful if you want to write a, a short sentence about maybe a particular piece of work or a particular um, particular post, then you can write it in here. And if this deliberate excerpt exists, it will use this instead of defaulting to the summary of the content. Okay, so we update that, and I already from the previous class had put one into blog entry 3 which is why I can see that there, but if I refresh this now you should see blog entry 2 also change okay, to that um, deliberate excerpt that I put there. Yep. Yeah, so that's using that's using the single .php template. Yeah, and also as you can see, because uh, oh, oh sorry, also you can see that um, the search because I copied it from the index um, .php template. Okay, it's using the second sidebar here. Okay, which also I believe the blog section is using. Okay, so this is an example of how we can have, we can switch in and out sidebars as, as we need them. So this sidebar has a, a calendar widget, okay, and, and a, um, just a text, text widget for us to enter in whatever text that we want. Um, and then the home page has the, our sidebar one with the, the other widgets in it, inside of it. Okay, um, let me just see if there's anything else. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. I might I might just mention um, a couple of plugins that I have installed that I have been using um, for this content. Um, one of them one of them's called um, 
so there's there's first of all there's the recent post thumbnail slider widget it appears with all of the other plugins it just happens to be a widget so it, it appears in the widgets um, area um, another one that I have is this one called uh, post post thumbnail editor so what you'll notice is um, okay so let's say so so these these featured images have been cropped and and WordPress just decides how to crop them, you know, uh, arbitrarily. But then we end up with some things like this Basset Hound having sort of its head cut off. Um, so I thought I'd just mention these plugins because they may be useful to other people. But I, there's this one called the Post Thumbnail Editor, which when you when you use it, um, if I go into the post and I find the um, Basset Hound, or incidentally. I mean, this may seem obvious, but once you've categorized things, you, you get all these other sort of benefits with um, administering your content. Like, for example, I can filter the post now by a category. Um, okay, so I can go and find the, uh, the Basset Hound. Okay, and I've got the featured image here. Um, and when I've got this thumbnail editor, plugin install that gives me this extra link down here which allows me to open up in a new window and I can actually choose the where are we here okay I can actually choose the crop that I want it to use okay and hopefully if that's worked I can go back and refresh the page Okay, and I can see now a, a more nicely cropped version of that thumbnail. Now there is other ways I could have done it. I could have gone and created separate images for each of the featured images that were cropped correctly and uploaded those. But um, I think this is just a this saves you a bit more time and requires less duplication of content. Um, so that's one plugin. Um, what else have we got? Um, there's force regenerate thumbnails as well. Um, which can be useful because what you might run into trouble with is when we set up our functions.php file, if I was to add if I was to add new thumbnail sizes now, um, you would probably find that if you then tried to output them, it would only work for new posts that I create after that because the thumbnails actually, as far as I'm aware, only get generated when the post is created. Um, so what you can do to get around that is um, there's uh, you can get these plugins which will force all of the thumbnails to regenerate which which gets you around that problem if you add later on a different thumbnail size um, then it will go back and, and recreate all of the thumbnails at those new sizes and and uh, that that you simply just find that under the tool setting then and force regenerate thumbnails and you hit regenerate and, and it will go through delete all the old thumbnails and then recreate them at all the new sizes that you've defined okay all right so one thing that did do is it looked like it reverted my my cropping of that one so so that might just be something to be wary of with that plugin um Ah, the other one, the other one might, which might be very useful is um, this auto post thumbnail. So, in my in my post, even though as I said, you don't have to use the same, you don't have to use the same picture for the featured image as as in the content. Um, so, what, but what you can do is if if you do want that to be the case, rather than having to go through and manually select the featured image on every single one. You can use this auto post thumbnail uh, plugin, and what it will do is, if you haven't specifically set a featured image, it will go through and automatically grab the first image out of the content of the post and use that as the featured image. So that can be that can be quite useful, um, also. Okay. Oops. Okay, so that's that's basically where we're up to now with the development of this site. Um, I, I will post the completed code um, on on the blog, so you can see what this looks like. Obviously, 
Um, obviously, it, it probably won't work exactly if you just install it as a theme because you don't have my content and categories and all that, for example, but you can at least have a closer look at the code and the template files if you want to. Um, so just to recap, basically what we've done today is gone from having a single template to having more specific templates for, for different sections of our site. Um, and then we've also looked at creating a, a widgetized sidebar and also remembering that quite useful thing of using the, the, the body classes to, to style um, different pages differently as well.